Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Trauma Recovery Coaching Summit, sponsored by the International Association of Trauma Recovery Coaching. I'm Bobby Parrish, the Association Executive Director. And hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Parrish, the Deputy Director. We are so glad that you are here to join us for these five days of interviews with our coaches. We're going to share information, um, trauma, recovery from trauma, and recovery coaching, trauma recovery coaching. I do want to give a quick trigger warning. Some of the things that we talk about could be triggering, so use your best self-care practices while watching the videos. Thank you, Bobby. So today we have the absolute honor of um, interviewing Jennifer Kandera and Jade Ebby. Um, today, unfortunately, Jennifer is here with us. We're so thankful she's here with us, but unfortunately um, her video is not working today. Um, but today, um, Jen and Jade are here to today to talk to us about trust as a survivor. Hi, Jen. Hi, Jade. How are you both today? Hi, Sarah. Hi, Bobby. <laughs> It's good to have you both here. It's Thank amazing. You for us. <laughs> so welcome. So what is trust? What is, you know, the basic answer, you know, not the basic answer, the basic question is what is trust? You know, Sarah, when we sat down and we looked at this, you know, the, the idea that um, trauma survivors have trouble trusting seems to be very prevalent. And so Going back to basics, you know, and, and thinking about what does trust mean within the context of a relationship seemed a really good place to start. So, you know, trusting someone means that you think that they are reliable, you have confidence in them and their choices and their behaviors, their actions, and you feel safe with them physically and emotionally. You know, the dictionary defines it as a firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability or strength of someone or something. So, you know, back to basics, just what is trust? That is what trust is. So, so why is it so hard for trauma survivors to be able to trust others? Well, when we look at what has happened, you know, during developmental trauma and the four lies that abuse teaches us, you know, which are we are powerless, we are worthless, we are to blame, and we should feel ashamed. That is the, the, the prevailing, you know, underlying thing that we live through as adults. And in the recovery path, you know, as the trauma happened in our, in our developmental years, it creates that need for us to self-protect. You know, so we believe, you know, without even realizing it, it's not a prefrontal cortex thing. We believe that disconnection keeps us safe emotionally. And so then putting ourselves out there emotionally and trusting seems congruent to staying safe. But the isol and the isolation may be uncomfortable, but it is familiar. You know, it's that uncomfortable comfort zone. You know, so then we, as adults, you know, we, we form these maladaptive coping mechanisms in childhood, you know, such as the all or nothing thinking, like I can't trust women not to stab me in the back or learned helplessness. You know, why should I date? Men are just out for one thing. You know, we bring those to the present day situations and we pull up those past hurts and traumas that have shaped our thinking. So those are those, are those broken core beliefs. You know, so we've been groomed to not trust others and conditioned as children to trust our abusers. And I think to go off of that, um, you know, it's really hard to trust other people when you don't trust yourself. Um, and I think that really goes back, um, you know, like Jen said, back to basics in terms of, um, you know, it's, it's hard to trust yourself when you've grown up in a world where um, you were told one thing, um, you know, this this father or this grandfather or this teacher is someone that, you know, you, you should respect and trust and they betray that trust. So naturally it goes back to, um, well, if I was proved wrong there, how can I trust myself in making the right decisions? Yes. And, you know, Jen, you talked about the four lies that we learn and that goes through my head. Um, Jade, with so many survivors thinking they're to blame for what happened, that would feed into that, how can I trust myself if I'm the reason why all these bad things happened? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. 
So to the people that we are expected to trust, you know, like, you know, please, please, you know, teachers, parents, everything like that, you know, they can still be the ones that, you know, portray our trust. And, you know, as a survivor, how do we, you know, reconcile and, um, and how do we move forward and trusting when we've been so hurt before in the past? Yeah, that's, that's, um, that's a hard one because yeah. it really requires the process, the process we talk about of recovery in general, um, but also learning to recognize the difference between someone who has done something to betake betray your trust versus someone who is untrustworthy. Um, and I like to use the example of parents and children because we're, we all are familiar with a situation where a child, you know, sneaks out of a house and goes against a parent's wishes and comes home late. And obviously, you know, trust is, is broken there, but that doesn't mean that the parent, um, deems the child completely untrustworthy, right? Um, it becomes a process in learning how to retrust. Um, and I think that that's true of any relationship, whether that's with yourself or with others, because you have to start discerning, okay, was this something that was a event or situation? And, and you know, I need to repair that relationship with them um, based on this event, or is this a pattern? Is do th is this person continually um, betraying my trust? Um, and, and as a you know survivor goes through their recovery, they learn the difference between the two. That the differences between you know um, someone who just does something once versus someone who continually proves to be untrustworthy. Well, and if I can jump in, I love that piece because that helps us with the discernment of who deserves our trust. And as, as, as developmental trauma survivors, we would never think that anyone, like we were worthy enough to be able to say they deserve our trust or they don't deserve my trust. Yeah, and I think that that developmental trauma sort of, I guess, a better word, a better, a good way to say it is it kind of damages our capacity to determine if someone is safe or not. Because Absolutely. what do we know? We only know, you know, the chaos and the dysfunction we were raised in. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think uh, another point, too, is that um, the further along we get in our recovery, the more we realize that there are gonna be, you know, we can come to expect, there are going to be times where our trust is broken. That's a given. And once you can accept that um, and know that, you know, because we all do untrustworthy things at some point in our lives, it's human nature. And that is the difference, um, you know, between someone who thinks everyone is out to get them or everyone is untrustworthy versus, um, you know, someone who is, is just, being human. Yeah. Yeah. I love that point, Jade, because it makes it really a level playing field and mm -hmm. we're able to look at people like we would look at ourselves. And exactly. that, that helps us to grow as survivors. Exactly. Love that. So as an adult, what is the story that we tell ourselves to justify not trusting others? And how does this look in the present day? Okay, so I, I love this question. I, I go back to Brene Brown and she talks about, you know, being wholehearted and what is the question that we ask ourselves, that wholehearted people ask their, themselves. And that question is, what is the story I'm telling myself in this situation? Because my reality may not be the reality of the situation because it is colored by broken core beliefs and trust issues and the developmental trauma plus the four lies abuse teaches. So as we move along this path of recovery, you know, if, if one of the big ones that I use with clients all the time is, I am safe now. I am safe to trust myself. I am safe to trust 
this person. And then if that person were to betray that trust, then we can take that as a learning opportunity and look at, well, let's, let's talk about this. Let's communicate and learn what happened. Where was the breakdown? You know, so I love that. What is the story I'm telling myself? I can make that story different every day. And sometimes it, if, I, if I'm triggered or my window of tolerance is closing and it's not a good day, um, my story is going to be a lot different than if I am going, okay, you know what? What is the story I'm telling myself? Well, I feel unsafe right now. Well, why do I feel unsafe? What's underneath that? What's underneath that fear? How do I go there? And access that. It's a powerful tool to say, what is the story I'm telling myself today? Because the reality is that we've brought these maladaptive coping mechanisms into adulthood and we, and into the present day, and they are a liability. You know, the broken core beliefs are a liability. So the more we can dismantle those as we go along, the more we can learn to trust ourselves and trust others. Is that, you talk about, you know, retelling the story, is that, um, a, a de whoo, an example of reframing? Um, I think it's different. Maybe it's a little bit similar. They're like, they're like cousins or sister and brother or something, <laughs> right? Um, you know, I think that the reframing, I do that a lot with clients in terms of, okay, so how could we shift your perspective? How could we look at that a little differently? You know, I'm driving down the road and, and somebody cuts me off and I want to say cuss words instead. Well, maybe they're running to the hospital because their wife just had an accident. You know, I can reframe yeah. that for myself and have some compassion. Um, this is what is the story I'm telling myself in my brain about this situation that's happening that may not be the reality. I may be bringing forth all of my maladaptive coping stuff to this situation and it might not be the reality of it at all you know and we're not we're not really venturing into shame today because that's another whole huge topic yeah um, but there's a lot of shame intrinsic pervasive toxic shame tied in with all of this you know so yeah it is i guess it is similar to reframing um but it isn't it, it I think it's more of a, okay, can I recognize what the story is that I'm telling myself at this moment yeah. in time versus, well, I better change my perspective on that. So how do we do that? How do we change our story? Um, you know, and how do we not just do it, but then how do we get it to stick? Oh, and that sticking is that sticky part, right? Right. Um, you know, and here's what I find. It's, it's funny because people, there's an old saying for every two steps forward, we have one step backwards. And so what I find to be true is that for every one time that I can, you know, in this path of recovery, every one time I can stop myself and say, wait a minute, Jen, you're safe right now. It's okay. That person is not, you know, you're not six years old and about to have this happen, this disaster happen, this trauma happen. Um, for every one time I do it right, six times I do it where I don't say those words to myself. You know, so it is definitely a process. I believe that um, I, we call them the three A's, that that comes into play big time in that scenario. You know, I start to have more of an awareness that I'm going back into those broken core beliefs and I'm having that thinking, right? And then I can accept that I'm in that place and that this is process takes time for us to heal and keep, and we keep on healing. We never stop healing and growing and learning. This is the life work. And then I go from awareness to acceptance to action. What can I do in this moment? Well, I can say to myself, you know what? You're safe right now. It's okay. Let's, let's do something different. And, and the opposite, if I'm not safe and it's not okay, then I can remove myself. I can take some action and get safe in that moment. I can be aware that my emotions are messengers and they're telling me something and I need to listen to them, you know? So that's one piece, you know, the learning to discern who is worthy to trust is another huge piece. Huge. <clears throat> yeah. But as, you know, Jen and Jade, you're both, you know, trauma recovery coaches, you know, um, how can you help, you know, survivors learn to help trust other people again? Um, well, I have um, a typical saying that I, I say with pretty much anything, when in doubt, chunk it down. Mm -hmm. And I believe that that is true in this case as well. Um, I tend to find that helping clients practice trust with 
tangible, safe things um, is a good way to start getting those early wins in and allow them to see, okay, so I did trust this person, place, thing, and I'm okay. And, you know, slowly as they begin to realize, you know, the, the trust in, in various things are not detrimental to them or uh, their recovery, they can start to, you know, move on to things like relationships. Um, so, you know, um, for example, trusting the page uh, in, in writing, being able to trust something that isn't going to um, you know, literally is not going to hurt you, gives them a little bit of, okay, yeah, I can do this. And then, um, you know, I know Jen and I have talked several times where her clients have um, mentioned that they don't feel, um, they don't trust her. And she says, you know, that's okay. You're not, you don't have to trust me. You need to trust the process. And I love that. And I use that all the time now because um, it's so true is that it's much easier to trust things that you know aren't don't have the capability to necessarily hurt you than it is to trust someone who is living and breathing and has the capacity to, you know, um, be untrustworthy and trick you and um, give you shame and blame. So I always try to start with that easier, the easier steps of trust first um, before we move on to relationships. I love that, Jade. You know, that's that whole baby steps thing. And when we set recovery goals with clients, we make them really bite-sized and manageable, you know? And so, you know, because, I mean, trauma survivors often, when we're adults, we become adults, we, we don't have the power of relationship repair tools. We never learned, you know? So as coaches, I get to be that sounding board for their trust issues. You know, and so the attunement of connecting with a client so that they can gradually, and those are those keywords, gradually, progressively, you know, process wise, feel emotionally safe, you know, sitting with them, holding space with them so that they can, you know, that gentle curiosity, gentle exploration, you know, without judgment, you know, they, we, we work a lot on, there is no judgment from this part, this side of the table as you, as it were. Um, you know, and having it be like, like Jade said, you know, having it be okay that they don't trust right away. You know, the trust comes as the connection grows is what I've found. Um, you know, I can also model healthy relationships with them. You know, if there's an issue, I've had clients that have had, you know, an issue with something I've said and we're able to come back and say, okay, let's talk about that. And then we have this start to finish this beautiful resolution of communication and we can, um, you know, both, they can tell me how they feel and they don't feel judged and they don't feel shamed and it's okay. And that builds trust, that being able to talk about what their deeper, you know, emotions and feelings are about that. Um, and then I, I do a lot of, you know, teaching and modeling self-compassion tools, the Am I trying to protect myself and withdrawing from this person first so that I can stay safe and not be hurt? That's a big one. And teaching mindfulness, you know, where are my feet and what time is it right here and right now? You know, do we know that six months from now that person is going to turn around and betray your trust? No, we don't. We don't. So let's stay in today and, and try to stay in today, you know. Um, just a lot of tools, 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 you know. And a lot of compassion and just just sitting with them working through it do either of you are you finding a pattern between I'm, i don't know i guess this is a chicken or an egg type question do they learn to trust you before they're able to learn to trust themselves or do they need to be able to trust themselves to be able to trust you oh i think that's a great question bobby um I have found so far that it seems that it's easier for them to trust me before they trust themselves. That the trust of self is, is really, really huge for them. Um, and I know it was for me as a survivor. It was like I could trust in what someone else said before I would trust myself to make the right decision. 
Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree with that. Um, that's definitely been a big part of my recovery is uh, I find it much easier to trust others than trusting myself and my decisions. Um, so I agree with Jen completely that um, my clients tend to put more trust in me than they do in themselves. Okay. Thank you so much, Jen and Jade, for being here today. I love this topic, and I'm hoping that we can come back to it and talk about it more in depth another time, maybe on the podcast. So thank you so much for being here. Um, so people are listening, they're watching, and they're like, oh, this fascinates me. I want to connect with Jen. I want to connect with Jade. How would they find you? Where would they find you? Well, for me, I, my website, uh, jenniferkindera.com. I'm also on Facebook under Jennifer Kindera Coaching, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest. I'm all over social media. So yes, please come find me. I'd love to talk to you. And for me, um, you can find me at jadeebcoaching.com. And that's the same um, username I have for all social media. So jadeebcoaching on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Um, you can also find me um, writing on Medium as well as Jen. Um, we really love the Medium platform and regularly post um, blog posts about topics like trust and recovery and all that fun stuff. Brilliant. Well, I just want to take this opportunity now to thank all our viewers okay, today coming along to watch our interview with Jade and and Jen. Thank you so much again, girls. Um, we hope you're all enjoying the summit. We've got many more videos for everyone to watch. Um, but until then, we hope to see you all again soon. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.